Okay, and there it is. All good. So let's set to global. Um, <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm Carla. I'm I'm using Ariadna's computer because her connection is is more stable. So I hope you can see the presentation. Um, I'm going to walk you through these uh, these uh, integrated test uh, management strategies. Uh, this nice presentation that was uh, designed by by Panos, and uh, it's about enteromixum lay. So enteromixum lay it's an intestinal parasite that in guilt-head serine produces a chronic disease that can even induce mortalities and uh, because yeah, this parasite lives and divides in the intestine of the fish. It will disrupt the, the intestine and cause, uh, will cause problems with nutrient absorption. Therefore, the typical clinical signs you can find with this parasite are weight loss, anorexia, cachexia, delayed growth, uh, sometimes swollen abdomen, and uh, eventually uh, death. So there are certain environmental factors that can uh, increase the risk of this uh, disease. For instance, the water exchange, uh, places with low currents or enclosed areas uh, can increase the concentration of the parasite. Also salinity, the parasite likes salt water and the lower the salinity, the lower the, um, the viability of the parasite. This parasite cannot survive in, in fresh water uh, however, freshwater fish have been experimentally infected, so they, they could potentially harbor the, the parasite. And uh, also temperature, like in many other parasite um, models, uh, the higher the temperature, the happier the parasite is. However, uh, where there's a upper limit with this parasite, it gets inhibited uh, in temperatures above 30 degrees and the lower limit would be uh, 15 degrees. So it, it won't uh, infect that much uh, below 15 degrees. So infected fish uh, are able to release infective stages of the parasite uh, with the feces. And uh, this can uh, be infected for other fish if they eat them. Uh, also, um, dead or moribund fish can be infected if uh, cannibalized. The parasite is able to survive in seawater uh, up to 24 hours. Uh, infected fish also release uh, myxospores, which are spores that are not uh, infected for other fish. However, they can infect uh, another host of this parasite, an invertebrate that we still don't know which one it is. And uh, this parasite will develop within the invertebrate, and then the invertebrate will release infected spores for the for the fish. So we have a risk there. It's this unknown invertebrate, and and it's difficult to manage because we still don't know uh, which uh, is this uh, different host. Um, so well, again, uh, it's uh, this is going to be repeated a lot because it's very important. Dead or moribund fish can uh, infect other fish if they are cannibalized. This parasite is not transmitted uh, vertically, but it can be transmitted horizontally by cohabitation uh, or uh, exposure to water effluent from uh, infected tanks or cages. Also, in our lab, we perform experimental infections by oral or anal intubation with the parasite. <clears throat> this uh, parasite, Enteromixum lay, uh, does not only infect gillhead zebrim, it infects a wide range of uh, species. The most acceptable is uh, sharp snout zebrim, uh, in which this parasite can cause uh, around 100% of mortalities, and this has been a huge problem in the farming of this species. Another species that it's cultured a lot in the Mediterranean is European sea bass. In this fish, the, the health impact of the parasite is minor, but they can uh, still harbor the, the parasite and transmit the disease, although they, they, they are like asymptomatic carriers of, of the disease, but they are a risk for more susceptible species that can be farmed in nearby cages. And as I said before, there are many other species, marine species that can be uh, infected, that can harbor the parasite and can be a risk for other fish species. So what can farmers do to manage this disease in aquaculture? Well, there are 
certain things that are nice, uh, important to avoid. So again, uh, the, it's important to, to correctly dispose of moribund or dead uh, fish because they can transmit the, the disease. Um, it's also important to, to have a, a good uh, feeding of the fish. So low feeding rates uh, can increase cannibalism and then uh, the parasite can spread faster. Or also inadequate diets can cause intestinal problems that uh, will yeah, um, make the intestine more suitable for, for the parasite or uh, increase the, the rate at, uh, where the infection um, develops. It's also important to avoid high stocking densities and uh, recirculation systems because they will increase the concentration of the, of the parasite. It's important also in the farms to perform periodic surveys. There are uh, different um, diagnostic methods to detect the parasite in very early stages, for instance, histology or PCR, and this will help take uh, fast decisions of what uh, you can do uh, with your infected fish. We also develop a non-lethal molecular method that can uh, allow to detect this uh, infection at early stages without having to kill the fish. Some management practices that are uh, recommended here, uh, for instance, for sea cages, uh, if possible, it would be interesting to move the cages to exposed areas to, to sea corals, so then the parasite will get washed out. If you have a diagnosed, uh, positive diagnosed fish in your facility, it's important to avoid stress because it, this will uh, increase the, the infectivity of the, of the parasite. You, you will get more, more fish infected and more um, severe symptoms. Um, if you're transporting the, the fish, it's very important to clean uh, and disinfect the vehicle before and after every transport. And when getting new fish in a facility, uh, they should be quarantined and checked by, uh, for instance, PCR uh, to uh, see if they have or not the parasite before getting in contact with other fish in the facility. For land-based facilities or exhibition aquaria, uh, it's recommended to clean the tanks with fresh water because the parasite doesn't like uh, fresh water. Also, if you have fish that can uh, hold, a, um, that can live in a wide range of salinity, the, the lower the salinity you, you use, it's, it's better for not spreading this disease. And the water entering the system should be filtered to avoid the entrance of the parasite. It's also important to clean the water channels and pipes to limit the prevalence of this unknown invertebrate that can also harbor uh, and transmit the parasite. Uh, it's interesting to decrease water temperature and then you will uh, decrease the development of the parasite. Again, avoid recirculation or, or reuse of uh, water and you need a proper design of the water intake um, effluent points so, so then uh, you will have clean water entering your, your system and you will have less risk of the parasite. And well, again, it's very recommended to perform periodic surveys to uh, detect the disease early and then uh, be able to take fast decisions. Currently, there are no treatments available against this disease. However, we've been investigating some uh, in-feed uh, mitigating solutions. So there are some uh, diets or additives like uh, sodium butyrate or the diet Sanacor or Shield that um, lower the disease uh, signs of this of these parasites. So they, they actually do not uh, cure uh, the parasite, but at least they will help the fish cope better with the, with the disease and uh, show less uh, disease signs. And the last slide about prevention, we still also don't have any preventive uh, tool, for instance, like a vaccine. Uh, however, uh, there's a lot of research on uh, cellular and uh, humoral immune responses against this parasite. And we actually recently described that the fish that survive an infection with, with enteromyxum lay, that gilhead serine that surviving enteromyxum lay, um, do not get reinfected. So this is actually the basis for vaccination. This is acquired immunity, and uh, it's what you need uh, to have a, a working vaccine. So with this fact, uh, we know that performing a vaccine, developing a vaccine against enteromyxum, uh, will be uh, will be uh, good. Will be working in 
in, in aquaculture. So we are actually um, trying to develop uh, this vaccine to, to be used and, and to, to manage uh, better these diseases. And that's my presentation. I give the floor back to Ariadna. Thank you very much for listening. And I, uh, I can uh, answer the questions also in my, I'm connected also to my computer, so I can answer the questions there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carla and James. Um, just for all the participants, just to remind you, you might have